looking to make some healthier habits this holiday season, make sure to check out our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook as we are doing a Planksgiving event where we are doing daily plank workouts. We will be doing an advent for healthy, happy hips this holiday season, and then also have a sugar challenge, a two-week sugar challenge that you might be interested in. Happy holidays! Healthy Humans. I am your host, Courtney, and today I am interviewing Zoe Hoffman. She owns Hoffman Tutoring Group, and she is here to share with us how we can help our child navigate the homework situation, also in regards to goal setting and having a growth mindset. I know that this is something that a lot of moms are dealing with right now, and I thought it would be really great to have her on. So I'm excited for you all to listen in. I hope you enjoy it. I um, started tutoring when we lived in Pensacola and really quickly fell in love with it. I was trained as a teacher, but then with the moving around with the military, it just, you know, wasn't going to work out for me to be in the classroom. So then I learned how to do online tutoring uh, and that was super cool. And I made that transition, I guess, like four years ago and then realized like there was a need for that for many different reasons. And and I b- then began to specialize in math. So that's like what I personally specialize in is um, math and particularly like for preteen and teen okay. girls. Oh, okay. um, it, I mean, I, I can tutor math for anyone, but that's kind of where my personal passion lies. And then I started to bring on other tutors that could tutor online for different subjects so that we could match kids with somebody who could meet their specific need, um, as well as to kind of have a variety of personalities and people with different understandings, you know, so I might match someone with, um, like if they have like a really wiggly (laughs) six-year-old that needs reading tutoring, I might match them with my tutor who has a really wiggly six-year-old at home. Okay. um, Because they understand that need. Okay. And is it all ages? Do you work with, or do you try to keep it like that preteen? So we actually serve um, kindergarten through eighth grade. So we stop, you know, before they get to high school. Um, And then, you know, if, if they, if they're with us until they get to high school, I usually refer out after that. Okay. Um, So we do kindergarten through eighth grade. Okay. Do you have any tips to help make homework more enjoyable or uh, that might not be even the term I want to use, just make it so that it's not such a struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like how you reframed it from maybe not enjoyable, <laughs> but maybe just okay. Yeah. Um, so the the biggest thing that I tell families to do first off is to get into like a homework routine. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and it might not be the same every night because I understand like everybody has after school sports and things that are going on church, but just having every day, having a time where your kids know that homework is going to get done. So that they, you're avoiding at least that initial fight on you saying, okay, it's time to do your homework and then them pushing back at you. And so, you know, if it's a day where soccer is happening, maybe your kids know that they're going to be doing their homework in the car while they wait for soccer practice to start. Just something like that. Things like keeping all the supplies together, having things organized can be helpful as well, just for like that initial chaos of I need this and I don't have it. You can even make a little caddy of homework supplies to put in your car, um, you know, so that there are some extra things there that, you know, you can't pull the, I don't have a pen on me because I have a pen right here um, or like a glue stick or whatever. And then also just, knowing where your resources is ahead of time. So if you are having trouble with math homework, 
knowing the resources that you can access to help your child with the math mm-hmm. homework. So, mm-hmm. you know, kind of compiling that list ahead of time, whether it's a list of websites, like I love Khan Academy and Purple Math for mm-hmm. math, mm-hmm. or the school website, or where you can find the book online. And then also maybe even some people, um, like maybe you have your brother is really great at at helping with math. And so you have his number on there and say, you know, call your uncle Jeff, because I can't do this with you right now. And then also just like, and this is a hard one, but knowing when to stop. So, you know, kind of having an arbitrary number in your head, maybe you don't share it with your kids of when, (laughs) when it's been enough and when we're going to call it quits for the night. I understand that's easier said than done. Sometimes with perfectionist kids, especially like they're going to want to keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, but knowing when to call it quits and just to email the teacher and say, Hey, this was taking way too long. It was cutting into mental health or sleep or whatever else. And we decided to call it quits. Like we need your help figuring out what to do next. Most teachers are going to be really receptive to that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of us have mental blocks sometimes around doing stuff like that, because when we were in school, it was like, you do your homework and, or you get a zero. Um, (laughs) and that might be your kids, your kids teacher as well. And maybe there's some lessons there about like, when we evaluate what's worth it and what's not as far as, you know, losing a bunch of sleep or getting a zero. And then the final thing I would say is kind of to be in tune with your child's focus. So I think we forget that kids can't focus for very long and that can become, part of the reason why we're fighting during Mm -hmm. homework time, or, you know, we're just kind of grumpy. Kids typically can focus plus or minus one minute of their age is the rule that I use when trying to figure out how long a kid can focus. So I'll start with that number and then I'll move up or down from there. So if they're seven, I'm thinking six to eight minutes is when they can really, really focus. And so setting a timer for that amount of time and then letting them take a break and get up and move around and, and do what they need to do for a couple minutes before going back to the task. And it may seem like that's going to take you a really long time because like working in six to eight minute spurts is <laughs> and, and taking a couple minutes off seems like it's going to take forever, but it actually might take you less time mm-hmm. because you're not getting those wiggly unfocused trailing conversations <laughs> that, that come with a kid that just can't focus anymore. Yeah. And then the complaining and I can't do this and that type of thing as well. The whining and the, yeah. Yeah. So try it. And if it, you know, hopefully it works for you. If not, you can play with it until it works. Okay. How do you feel about like where homework should be done? Do you have any feeling on that or? I think it depends on the kid and it like with everything, right? We can always come up with things that we think are going to be great. And then we try them and they're not great for that one kid. Right. Um, so it really depends on your kid and you know, your kid the best. So if you have a really distractible kid, maybe that is doing homework in their room where there's, you know, if there aren't a bunch of distractions in their room, that might be the best, um, environment for them Mm -hmm. versus a kid who maybe is able to distract themselves and is constantly getting off task especially with kids working on the computer more now Mm -hmm. that kid might do better at the kitchen table, um, with you there to kind of, you know, put a hand on their shoulder or whatever. So really just kind of think through where each kid works their best and then go from there. I don't think there needs to be like one hard rule on where kids do homework. It's helpful to have it be the same place every day, but it also doesn't have to be the same place for each kid in your family. If you don't want it to be. Right. Um, Because I know like sitting, if you have five kids and sitting them all around the kitchen table to do homework probably isn't working for everybody. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, just, and, and sometimes too, it's great to have an alternate spot that kids can go maybe when they're having a day that's a little bit off. So, you know, if your kid comes home and you just can tell that it is not going to be a good homework day, say, Hey, why don't we go do homework outside? And just kind of like that change of scenery might be enough to get you through without the chaos that you think might happen. Right. Yeah. 
Well, and I like how you said to give them just a certain period of time as well, because I think about my son, my middle son, and how he was very active when he was younger. And he would be doing like, he'd be just, he'd walk around the dining room table and then sit back down and then he'd be playing with the ball mm-hmm. and then sit back down. And I, 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 I was a teacher before myself. So I kind of knew that he might, this might be how he processes information. And I remember he would even at, um, when we'd sit down, I'd always do story time with them in the evening and he'd be just all over the place. And I'd be like, Grady, are you listening? And he would say, yeah. And he would spout off better to me than the two that were sitting there. (laughs) Everything I had just read. (laughs) So it is, it's that process. How do they process? And by allowing them to then have maybe six or seven minutes and then get up and move around, Mm -hmm. that might be, and some of them might even need to be up moving around while they're doing their homework, just because it helps to process the information better. Right. And when think about your son and he had had to sit down probably at school all day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and so this is his opportunity to get, so, you know, yeah, not holding so tightly onto the, the ways that we think our kids should be doing homework and instead kind of letting them be themselves, I think is a really great way to avoid some of the fighting. Right. Um, like if they need to stand, let them stand. If they need to lay under the kitchen table, let them lay under the kitchen table, you know? And I remember when I was a kid and studying, I just, I could not memorize things like memorization has never been my strong suit. (laughs) And so when I had to study, my dad would take me to the roller rink and he would have me, like, if we were doing spelling words, I would spell a word and then take a lap. And then spell another word and take a lap. I mean, just trying to get it in my brain. I mean, and movement really does help you process and remember things. Right, right. I don't, and so sometimes you might wonder why we don't move more at school. Mm-hmm. And I, a lot of parent, a lot of teachers are doing more movement in the classroom, which I think is great. Yeah, yeah. And I like how they do more centers Mm -hmm. to where it provides opportunities to move around and not just be stuck in that one same desk all day. And the flexible seating movement. I love that too. So that kids can be more comfortable and, you know, I think that's all, all great. Yeah. Yeah. So how can we assess for ourselves? Um, You had mentioned something about having um, them, reach out to the parents. And sometimes a zero might be less important than that night's sleep. So, Mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, it might be more important for them just to get the zero than the good night's sleep. How should we be assessing as parents, all of these grades? Do you have a feeling on their grades and what we need to be doing to assess that? I have lots of feelings about (laughs) grades, but I'll try to condense it. Okay. So Grades, I always tell families, the way that you look at grades is going to really depend on your family values and what you're wanting your kids to get out of their education. So, you know, different people have different ideas of what they want their kids to get out of their education. So I can't tell you what you should be aiming for there because only you know that. But sometimes I think grades can cause, again, fights that don't need to happen because we as the parent start to freak out about the grades, maybe stirring up some things from our own past or our own ideas about what success is or what we need to be doing in order to be successful, things like that. The one thing I would say is I focus more on improvement than on grades and learning instead of grades. So, you know, helping your child learn how to focus on improvement is going to benefit them so much in their adult life versus focusing on grades. Because once we get out of school, there are no more grades, right? But there is still improvement to be had. Mm -hmm. So um, teaching your child how to set goals is a really great way to handle the grade situation. So a lot of times, if you start goal setting with your child, you're going to see their grades go up, but you're not going to be talking all about grades all the time. So kind of getting in tune with them and saying, Hey, like 
I see that you're really struggling in math this school year. Um, why don't we sit down and talk about a goal for you and letting them lead that conversation of like what they want to accomplish in math and then helping them write a goal and then checking in with them and, you know, until they reach that goal, that is a process that I would keep shorter as you know, like at, at the beginning and that you can lengthen it as time goes on. But that's my main thing about grades is to help your child focus on the improvement and the learning instead of the grade. That's, you know, it's hard, especially if you have a grade driven kid Mm -hmm. that wants the grades, Mm -hmm. um, or a kid that really doesn't care (laughs) about what you're trying to, to instill in them. But, um, also I always suggest that because almost every school now has a grade site that you can like log into and check your child's grades. Right. And some parents can start to use that as like almost like social media. Like you're checking into it like multiple times a day Mm -hmm. (laughs) and kids do this too. And that's not healthy because then you start to obsess. So instead I suggest, you know, pick a couple times a week where you and your child sit down together and look at those grades. You're not looking at it without them and then coming to them, you know, ready to go with a story that you've already made up in your head about what's going on with their grades. Right. Um, instead you're sitting down with them, you're talking about the grades in real time, and then you're making a plan moving forward based on those goals that maybe they've made with you and then checking in again and, you know, discussing again. Uh, and I find that that is also helpful for kids and parents. Okay. Now in regards to goal setting, how do you feel about incentivizing them? What do you mean by incentivizing? Well, um, so is there like steps along the way that they would be getting incentives or, you know, whether it be some, some sort of reward or, and this would go into like internal rewards compared to external right. rewards, but I'm just thinking of a child who might make these goals. Cause I, the goal setting is a thing that they do at my children's school and they'll make a goal, but then they're not the follow through isn't there. And I don't Mm -hmm. know if that's just because they're not having to sit down and look at where they are going with their goal throughout the year, or if it's because of they haven't, there's no re like why, you know, like they haven't determined why they want to reach that goal. Yeah. And I, I think that that's a really good question because all kids need to know why. Right. They're, they're going to do something. And so that's a, a thing. And so if, if people are listening and they want to dive more into goal setting, I actually have a goal setting guide for parents. Um, and it's normally like it costs a few bucks on teachers pay teachers, but if people email me, I'll send it to them for free. Okay. And, and one of those things that I want kids to think about when they're goal setting is why do you want to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, and then how are you going to get there? Like, what are the actual actions that you need to take to make it to your goal? And I think the thing that we miss out on a lot when kids are goal setting is we're like, yeah, make this goal. It's going to be a smart goal. It's going to be great. You're going to learn all these, these great lessons, life lessons. And then there's nobody checking in with that kid. Right. Right. So if you have the time and, and this is something that's important to you as the parent, you might want to set the goal for yourself to check in with your child and to say you, okay, like on Mondays, we're going to check grades and we're going to check in on goals. And like, I'm really going to ask you some, some serious questions about, you know, what do you feel like you did really well as far as these actions? Like, and you can have the list of actions out there say like, these are the actions you said you were going to take. Like, what do you think you did really well on? What do you feel like you didn't do super great on? that we, you know, and how can I support you as you're moving forward? Um, that can go a really long way. Mm -hmm. Just that little check-in because kids don't have that executive functioning skill that we do as adults to remember to check in on stuff like that. So (laughs) that, that kid who is not following up on the goal, I mean, it really could be because they don't care about the goal. And then in, in that case, we're like, maybe we should work on 
a, maybe we should come up with a different goal, right? But it might be because no one's checking in with them. Um, and I would, if you want to incentivize, I don't think that's a bad thing, but I, I would evaluate whether you're doing it because it's something that you want your child to do, <laughs> which is fine, but then maybe it's not a goal. Maybe it's just mm-hmm. a house rule or a house, you know, like, but maybe bring your kid into, into coming up with those incentives. Like what feels logical and reasonable for an incentive for yourself when, once you reach this level, right. um, because I feel like we do that as, as adults too, you know, you'll say like, okay, when I get to the end of this week and I've done this, this, and this, I'm going to have like a real big bowl of ice cream or whatever it is that gets you kind of excited about doing the mundane things. Right, so I don't right. think that there's anything wrong with that. I think involving your child and maybe avoiding like super extravagant incentives. Right. Um, but does that answer your question? Yeah, about no, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then I also, I liked how you mentioned um, talking about areas that maybe they didn't succeed in mm-hmm. reaching and why, because I think that's one thing that tends to be missed for a lot of families. It's if you didn't do it, it's more of a punishment rather than a, well, how can we, how can we learn from this experience? Yeah. And I mean, that is how real life works Mm -hmm. is to kind of reevaluate everything at certain periods of time and then move forward. So I think it's really helpful to, to do that with your kids as well. And that can actually help them reach their bigger goal faster. Right. Um, when they're not so scared of, punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking a little bit more into this, um, a lot of people talk about this growth mindset with children. Now, what are things that we could be doing to help create this growth mindset with our children? And I mean, even ourselves (laughs) for those of us who have a fixed mindset. Yeah. I mean, so for just a crash course in growth mindset and for anybody who hasn't bitten on this. I want to say it's a trend, but I was talking to a, um, another educator the other day. And I was like, do you think it's like a trend? Like, you know, all these education trends. And and then we came to the conclusion that it really isn't because Carol Dweck wrote mindset, which is the book that all of the growth mindset stuff is based on, um, in the late nineties. Okay. So, (laughs) so we're like, okay, like it's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, and it's good. It's not just bad science. It's, it's a really good way of thinking about things. So growth mindset is basically thinking that your potential and your abilities and skills are, um, able to grow depending on how much effort you put forth versus that they're fixed. Um, so in the academic realm, that would be thinking like I can work on math and become a better math learner versus I'm dumb at math and I am bad at math and nothing is ever going to change about that. So we want our kids to have a growth mindset because we want them to be able to work towards what we were talking about, their goals Mm -hmm. and get better at different areas of their life. So as far as helping kids develop a growth mindset, really setting goals with them is a great way to do that. Let them see you set goals is Mm -hmm. also a great way to do that. And being really honest about that process. So, you know, if you want to run a half marathon and you are, you consider yourself not a runner, right? You might expose your child to that process and say, you know, I've really always struggled with running, but I really want to do this half marathon because I'm raising money for this really great charity. And, you know, letting them see when you failed to wake up and run that morning and what it's like for you the next morning, because you didn't you know, follow through on your, on what you said you were going to do. That's all going to really help your kids kind of internalize that growth mindset and also changing the language that we use. So when your kid's sitting down for homework and they're getting discouraged and they say, I can't do this, encouraging them to reframe into something like, I can't do this yet. Or, you know, I am having trouble with this and I need help just kind of reframing or not saying, oh, wow, you're so smart. 
Um, and instead saying something like, you know, I can really tell that you put a lot of effort into studying for that test. I know a lot of, like, there's a lot of stuff going around on the internet <laughs> that, that talks about that. And sometimes it's just unrealistic. Like, right. um, sometimes you just need to say, wow, you're so smart or right. you're so beautiful. Like, I mean, that's just the reality. And I, I feel like we've gone a little bit too far with some of the, the language reset stuff, but it, it really is powerful. Mm-hmm. So, um, because a kid who is being told they're smart all the time. So a lot of people think growth, growth mindset in the sense of kids who are struggling in school. I've thought about it a lot from also the perspective of, of kids who are really great at school because they view themselves as really smart, mm-hmm. which is great, mm-hmm. but they're really hesitant to take risks. Yes. So they are not going to take that hard class. They're not going to step out on the limb and take that project that might not get them an A because then people will see that they're not quote unquote, not smart. Mm-hmm. So even for your kids who are really doing great at school, growth mindset is really important. And for those kids, I've suggested sometimes parents enrolling them in stuff that they know they're going to be bad at. Mm. <laughs> Or like, or doing something as a family that you know that they're going to be bad at, you know, just to kind of get some experience under their belt of not, of being a novice and not knowing or being able to do everything. Right. Well, and as you were saying that, I was thinking to myself, the perfectionist and Mm -hmm. they really struggle with that fixed mindset because if they, if they don't get it immediately, they're like, well, I don't want to do this. Like, yeah, obviously I can't do it. So I'm just going to let it go rather than that, trying to figure it out, realize that going through the steps and I'm thinking more sports related here, but going out and practicing every day. And I mean, that could even be math, practicing math. You can't be expected to know it the first time that algebraic equation, you've got to try it over and over and over again to where then you start to understand it because you've been practicing. Yeah. And even I think too, like, it's always great to even point out to kids, like when they're like, wow, they just like are really good at that. And just pointing out like, man, yeah, I bet they practiced really hard. Mm -hmm. Cause I think we're, we're all, um, our brains kind of work in the way of just assuming that that person is great, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like with social media, right? Like we see someone's great looking house and we just assume that it looks like that all the time. When in reality, it it probably only looks like that for five minutes. Or you're Um, only seeing the one little square. (laughs) The rest (laughs) of the house is chaos. (laughs) Well, and that's uh, like on my, we push out a lot of social media content for parents because that's what I am passionate about. Like helping people get their kids, the education they need. And in every reel or like TikTok video, you can see my house in the background and it is not filtered. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, like there's stuff everywhere. I don't know what to tell you. I have two toddlers. It's just exactly the territory. Yes. Yes. So is there anything we can do to help our children, especially, I mean, these past couple of years have been interesting um, for school, is there anything we can do to help make this like their, I don't want to say best year, but you know, to make this a great year for our children? Yeah. I mean, it, I want every kid this year to have a great year because this, the past last year was crap. And <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it just no, was it's like, the truth. <laughs> I don't know a whole lot. I mean, some kids really had a great year because they thrive in that at home online space. And I'm so happy about that. And I hope that those kids have found a way to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of kids, it was really hard, Mm -hmm. very stressful parents too. Mm -hmm. So to make this year great, I think just realizing that everything's not going to be perfect is a really great place to start. And that starts with us as the parents Mm -hmm. and the teachers and the tutors, helping our kids feel relaxed around learning and you know, joyful around learning is a goal that I always have. Um, and I think we all have that goal, but just finding ways to maybe make homework time feel cozy, right? So Mm -hmm. 
you know, lighting a candle and letting that kid lie under the dining room table and putting on some music, just finding like little ways to make those little pockets of your day with your child when they're doing school feel great. And then also open up the communication with your child's teacher. So this is not like a something that involves your child at all, but just, you know, knowing their email address or how they like to be contacted, contacting them before you have a complaint, right? <laughs> so, so contacting them with something really great your child said about them or something you really appreciate. And then that way you are already in contact with them when you have a question, you have Mm -hmm. a concern that homework went too long and you sent your kid to school without the homework. You need some extra resources or some extra help, or you're feeling really frustrated. That's going to make it a lot easier because you've already been there communicating with them versus like, oh man, I don't know how I'm going to email the teacher, you know, this thing that I've been worried about for so long. That really directly impacts your child and their education in a way that I don't think people give enough credit to. Mm -hmm. So, and and the teacher might take a few days to respond to you because they're swamped, Mm -hmm. but um, they appreciate you reaching out. And so I think that's the best way to make sure that your child has a good, smooth school year, um, because hopefully you're getting to the challenges before they become huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I love everything you said there with that. I am thinking to myself like, oh, I wish I could have like go back when my kids were little because that's when they love homework. You know, those Mm -hmm. first couple of years, they're so excited. I mean, I would remember (laughs) kindergarten came for my first son and he was like, I don't have homework yet. Like I want to do my homework because that was always the fun thing. Um, But to have it like a cozy area that you mentioned that, that just, I don't know. I think if you could keep that going, like start young when they're really Mm -hmm. excited about uh, homework and then allow that to keep going through the years, that could be a really special time for them. It could be fun or at least make it just feel a little less stressful. And even like when you think about the way that you remember or the way that you get into modes, right. It's like smells and Mm -hmm. sounds. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of people have a a certain candle or something they light when they're going to write or do something creative, like maybe having a homework candle, um, or, you know, a homework playlist or whatever might be super fun. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much for that. When should we think, so if we have that child, that's just really struggling, when should we start thinking about getting a tutor? Do you have recommendations, signs or anything to help? Yeah. So, and, and a lot of these signs tie back into what we've been talking about. So, you know, if your child is talking about how they can't do stuff and really beating themselves up verbally, that's always a really good sign that there's something going on. And either, you know, obviously you need to contact the teacher about that, but also it might be a sign that they need a tutor because tutor, a really great tutor is not just going to help your child do their schoolwork. They're also going to help them build confidence. So if your child is really struggling with their schoolwork, they're probably going to start saying, you know, I can't, or this is so stupid. Mm. I don't even care about math anyway. Those are all really big signs that maybe some extra help is needed. Also, even though, you know, grades are kind of a wishy-washy thing that depends on a lot of different things, but if you're Mm -hmm. seeing like a really steep drop in your child's grades, that's always a really good indicator that maybe a tutor is needed. And obviously you want to contact the teacher directly first and see kind of what they're noticing. Like maybe your child just isn't turning in their homework, but if your child is turning in all their stuff, but they're getting back assessments and homework, and it's just the grades are way lower than you're used to, that's also a good sign. And then third, I always tell parents, if you're wondering whether your child needs a tutor, they might need a tutor. (laughs) (laughs) So if it's crossing your mind frequently Mm -hmm. and you're going to bed at night thinking, Oh, I wonder, go ahead and just reach out to one. So a really great tutor or tutoring company will do free consult calls. And so you can call and you can talk through kind of what's been going on, what your concerns are. And then they will also be very honest on whether they think your child needs tutoring. Um, well, at least I am, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, or if you want to try some other stuff, like maybe they will give you some resources to use before you start, start the journey of doing tutoring, but just kind of being able to talk through that with someone who does 
that specific thing. Um, just like when you're like trying to get an interior designer or anything mm-hmm. else, mm-hmm. you want to do that consult just to kind of get the thoughts out of your head to a unbiased party and kind of see what they think. So oh. if you're thinking about tutoring, maybe just reach out to one and that way too, you have that number in your phone. So if you don't decide to do tutoring right away, at least, you know, you have someone you can reach out to if the time comes. Right. And I'm thinking even as you were saying all that in regards to just the interaction between you and your child, if it's becoming stressful Mm -hmm. as well, that might be a time to get a tutor. So it's not on you so much, but the tutor can be the one helping as well. That's a super great point. And that's actually, I would say like 50% of the people who call me, that's one of the things they mention. Is yeah. We're fighting too much. Yeah. And we, and you know what, like just the magical thing of some outside person coming mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. and being an authority figure and someone maybe that your child looks up to is so powerful Mm -hmm. when it comes to learning, because like you said, like you're the parent and your kid's going to fight you (laughs) on it no matter (laughs) what, because you also tell them to clean their room right, and to eat their dinner and uh, all the other things. So sometimes you just need a break from being that person. Right. Um, so that you can preserve your relationship with your child. Excellent. Now you mentioned earlier the free guide that you had. So I have a resource that if people want to email me, I'll send them for goal setting with their okay. child. Okay. And then we also have a freebie out right now, um, for homework. So I okay. wrote a super extensive ebook about how to help your child with homework without fighting. Okay. And, um, so you can download it and hopefully it'll give you stuff that you can use tonight. And so people can find that at Hoffman tutoring group.com slash homework and it, it downloads right away. And so hopefully it'll give you something that helps you immediately. Okay. And can you tell us about, you mentioned a free consult and then about your program itself, the tutoring. Yeah. Yeah. So we are a group of online tutors, um, that are highly qualified. So I only bring people in who are certified teachers Mm -hmm. or have a degree, um, either bachelor's or master's in, um, education. A lot of our tutors, you know, are, even more qualified than that, Mm -hmm. but that's my baseline. And, um, we do reading, writing, math, and study skills. Uh, and I basically, when you set up a free consult call with me, we chat, we talk about your concerns. I answer any questions that you have. And then I, if you want to move forward with trying online tutoring, I match you with a tutor that I think is going to be the best fit for your kid. So usually that's somebody who specializes in that subject or subjects and, um, who I think's personality wise would fit well with your kid. And then we let you do a free 30 minute trial session. So you can kind of try out home, um, online tutoring, see if it's the right fit for you. Um, and then also to make sure that like the, the fit between the tutor and the student is good. And then after that, then we can, we kind of talk about weekly tutoring and get you started on a tutoring package and all of that. But we want to make sure that you get that opportunity to try online tutoring before you buy it. Perfect. That's great. I love that you offer the 30 minute, not just the consult, but then as well, Mm -hmm. the opportunity to work with them for 30 minutes and see. Yeah. We don't want anybody to pay for something that's not going to be helpful for them. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to let us know about any tips or I just want everyone to know they're doing an awesome job okay. and it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need resources or want to talk, you can always reach out to me. Perfect. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to our podcast. I really hope you enjoyed learning from Zoe in regards to um, homework and goal setting, along with how to help you and your children create more of a growth mindset, you can head to hoffmantutoringgroup.com for the information that she provided um, in regards to the ebook. You can also email her, which I will post the information in the show notes for you for her email address if you are interested as well, so that you can receive that free guide to help you with goal setting and know that you can also receive 
a consult with her and a 30-minute tutoring session if you go to Hoffman Tutoring Group. So I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you have an amazing day. And before you go, I wanted to let you know that if you are a mom who's wanting to begin to start making healthier choices but are not sure where to start or don't feel like you have the time, we are offering a five-day challenge that is free for you to get started on making small changes each and every day. It provides you with a quick five-minute movement or workout routine along with a five-day meal plan with family-friendly meals you all will enjoy. All you're going to do is head to Form Fit Mom Community on Facebook and you can join us there. That is formfitmomcommunity.com. Each month I do five day challenges for you that you can participate in and we'd love to see you join us over there. Have a great day.